So we're going to go over naming ionic compounds and determining how to form ionic compounds in under five minutes for the chemistry of regions. So in this, uh, in this video, we're going to look back at our example of NAF that we looked at in the previous video where we explained why this interaction happens. And in this video, we're going to talk about naming this. Okay. So for any ionic compound, what you're going to do is you're going to take the metal and then you're going to write down the name of that metal, right? Which in this case is sodium. And then you're going to take the metal, sorry, the name of the non-metal and then give it the ending IDE. So usually this is fluorine, but you're going to replace the INE with an IDE. So this turns into sodium, which is the metal's name, fluoride, fluoride. Okay. And that's how you name this. That's all. And if you want to write the formula, you just put it as NAF. This is the uh, ionic bond notation. That's how you would write it if they asked you. Uh, for that. So let's go over another example of figuring out <clears throat> the formula and the name. So let's say that a question asked you to write the formula between for an ionic bond that formed between nitrogen and magnesium. Okay, so first of all, nitrogen and magnesium, write down your non uh, write down your metal first and then your nonmetal. So here we have magnesium, here we have nitrogen, we know that magnesium has two valence electrons, if we look at it electrons, it's electron configuration. And we know that nitrogen is going to have one, two, three, or four, and then five valence electrons. So this magnesium, because it's a metal, wants to give up these two electrons. And because this nitrogen is a non-metal, it wants to gain ele electrons, right? To complete its octet, which means eight valence shell. Okay, so this magnesium has two electrons that it's willing to transfer over. But the issue here is that nitrogen has three valence electrons that it needs to take up. This wasn't an issue with sodium and fluoride because sodium had one electron to give up and fluoride had one electron that it needed. In this case, we have a difference in the number of electrons. So how do we work around this difference? Well, what needs to happen is we need to find the lowest common multiple between these two numbers. So what's the lowest common multiple between two and three? Well, that's gonna be six. So instead of the magnesium giving up two electrons, I actually need to have three magnesiums, which give up a total of, well, you guessed it, six electrons. And I need two nitrogens that will accept a total of six electrons. That way we have a total transfer of the same number of electrons and we're left happy. Okay. And I'll show you how that happens. So for example, if I have one magnesium, right, it has one and two valence electrons, and I have one nitrogen, which has one, two, three, four, five. If this magnesium decides to give up its electrons, right, it'll give up one, two electrons, and this nitrogen still won't have a complete octet. So let's go add another magnesium. Again, has one, two valence electrons, so it's gonna give up one of its electrons. Now this nitrogen has a full octet, but guess what? This magnesium doesn't have a full octet, so it still has one extra electron it needs to give up. That's where the second nitrogen comes in. So again, same situation, it comes in automatically with one, two, three, four, and five valence electrons. So this nitrogen is, sorry, this magnesium is gonna give up its other electron, and this nitrogen will now have six valence electrons. Finally, this last magnesium will come in, over here, it'll give up its two valence electrons. That'll be accepted by this nitrogen, which already has six to give it eight valence electrons. So again, both of these are happy. You end up using, well, I should have wrote it here. You end up using two nitrogens, right? Because it just fills in the other two and you end up using three magnesiums. This is just a visual way of seeing, you know, the, the what we did here, right? We knew, we know that the magnesium gives up two electrons and nitrogen takes three electrons. So we find the lowest common multiple six. How do you get six from two? You multiply it by three. How do you get um, six from three? You multiply it by two. So the formula here is going to be Mg3 N2. And if I wanted to name this, we'll follow our naming nomenclature here, right? Or I guess that's an nomenclature, just how you name something, right? You don't need to say naming nomenclature, just nomenclature. So metal followed by the non-metal that ends with IDE. So the metal here is magnesium. So magnesium and nitrogen, we'll just put nitride because instead of nitrogen, this needs to end in IDE. So we get rid of the OGN, uh, OGN and we replace it with IDE. So this is magnesium nitride. That's how you write this down. And of course the magnesium will have a plus two charge and the, and the nitrogen will have a minus three charge because it gained three negatively charged electrons. For ionic compounds, the lettering here, or sorry, the numbering here does not get incorporated into the name. So it's not trioxide or trinitride, just magnesium nitride. 